Okay, rise up, rise up, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, kings and queens, friends, frenemies, energy agents. It's me, Brother Mali, and this is the Gambi One channel. We're talking today about the 10 things. Now, I'm going to say five. Actually, on this video, I'm going to say five things because it's going to be a part one and part two. The reason why I can't say 10 is because I'm using the other hand to hold the phone. So, we've got five things that we're going to talk about that you didn't know you needed to know before coming to move to West Africa. Um, I had put a post up on a Facebook group I'm in and I'll put a link to the Facebook group for you so you can join it yourself if you want to. And in this group I, I asked people, so what have you only found out about Africa now that you're here that you didn't even know was a thing until you got here? And you know, there were people who were like having issues with things like, like there's a level of culture shock. You know, I mean, even though you think, okay, well, I look like this and they look like this, so then I'll fit right in. And you realize you don't. So there was that kind of stuff. But some some other things a little bit more a little bit more interesting. So we're gonna go through the five areas. Starting with number oh, by the way, before I even go on to it, the last one I don't agree with. So there'll be a bit of pushback on the last one. So let's go through the list, okay? Starting with number one. This person says, how Africans love white people almost to the point of worship. Yo! Now, I've mentioned this before in a previous video and I got so much hate from it. So much people were like, Go back to your country, white power. You know, I, I can see that there's a power imbalance in um, the relationships that happen between local people and people who are come over and coming over from the west um, and that power imbalance is financial for the most part you know there are some very expensive very rich people over here who are living very lavishly thank you very much but for the most part you know you've got this thing where it's like one meal a day there is no car there is no there is no transport um you gotta walk where you're going everyone's just wearing flip-flops because that's the cheapest um pair of shoes to wear and yet with that going on people are having parties they're getting married they're having children they're having um naming ceremonies the whole lot they, they're having a full life whereas over in the west if you don't you know if you're if your next netflix doesn't get paid for a month you're putting your hair out is is no good to you so we've got so there's there's these different levels of expectations um and there's also different levels of income potential for people who for the for most people who live here in West Africa as opposed to people who are living in the West so it's like a person who's working in a supermarket in London um, big up AO he sent me a message asking me about this so a person living in London working in a supermarket you know you you could make yourself 1600 pounds for the month is not an incredible wage, but £1,600 is way more than the £40 a month you'd make if you're working in a supermarket in the Gambia, for example. So you can see there's a huge discrepancy in income. And so that plays out in relationships. So I would um, dissuade people from getting into interracial relationships um, because what you'll find is is that those people who are from Gambia for example really really go really go wild with excitement about this European person who's giving them time and it's like to the point where I'm like you're losing yourself as part of being in this relationship that's just me. But 
Let's move on to number two. This person says that it ain't as easy as I thought it was. The analog and almost ancient lifestyle in some parts of this country is so back in the days. Beautiful, but not easy. The culture is super complex, but at the same time is so intensely strong. The primitive instinct is dominant here instead of rational thinking like we are used to in the Western world. Anal yeah, analog. Yeah, analog. Analog indeed. You know, um, I was trying to explain this to, to my sister because we were talking about me getting something done. Nothing serious, nothing hard. You know, you go to an office, check some information, come back, report back. And it's taken me ages to do. And what I've tried to explain is that, you know, getting some information from an office is simple things in England. Like, you know, you go on your phone, you Google the name of the company, you find their phone number, you press the call icon, you don't have to dial it. Just press the call icon, it reverts back to the phone, and your phone will ring the number. You can ask for who you need to speak to, and get your information. Better still, you can just Google the question, and Google will look on their website for you, for you find the answer, and pop it up on your screen. Whereas over in, over here, nah, it's not so simple. It's like, the first thing I had to do was to go to the office, physically. So you gotta get ready, I'm going to walk up a hill. Look, look at this. Look. You see just here, right? So that's the next neighbor's house. And you see up there, that's the top of the hill. Now, obviously, it goes all the way around. It goes all the way around here. But that there is no mean feat. It's a, it's a big hill i got to walk up. I'm down by the sea. i got to walk up this big hill to get onto the main road. Uh, then I've got to, like, Jump on a jump into a taxi. So I've got to wait there in the sun, and it's it's hot. It's it's flipping hot over here, and I'm not complaining because I can see what the weather's like back in the UK, and that sucks. <laughs> but me here complaining about the 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 heat, just I just don't imagine that anyone's gonna be very sympathetic. So you got to wait for a taxi. Now, when the taxi turns up, it's one that is shared with other people. Then you've got to take from your, go from your destination and then walk to the train station. The walk alone is a good 20 minutes, half hour. Now, walking in anywhere for 20 minutes is a consideration. Walking in the African sun. Then take the train down into the city and then when you get to the city you've got to um, take another taxi to the office you get to the office the person you just speak to isn't there nobody else is willing to help you nobody else needs that nobody else sees the need for things like customer service so you're just on this very slow kind of you've got to come back now you will do all that and come back again i've tried emailing email response i get is please phone because what's the point of writing when i can speak to you so you got to like okay so let me try and ring 
So now you speak to the person, you say, yeah, I need some help with something. And they're like, yeah, come down. Okay, when are you going to be there? I'll be there on Wednesday. What time on Wednesday? I'll be there at 2 o'clock. All right, cool. I'll see you at 2 o'clock on Wednesday. 1.59 on Wednesday, I'll arrive there. Ask the man, he's not here. Why, where is he? He's gone to a client. He was supposed to meet me. Oh, no, he says he can't make it come on Friday. Who did he say, oh, he can't make it come on Friday too? He said to me. Bro, but why did he not say to me? I'm the one who's coming through all this drama to get here. So you, you get the point. Analog. Slow. Dro and people, you know, no rush. Everything Ari, everything Chris, everything easy. Easy going, danka danka. So it's just like stuff that works doesn't work here. And I'm very frustrated. I've talked about this a long time. I'm very frustrated about this. Let's move on to number three. Before I continue and bore you to death, let me move on to number three. This person says, deep culture things like marabou and juju things. Oh, actually, I've got something else I forgot to tell you. Hold on. Like what you're hearing so far, subscribe to this channel. Just press down here to subscribe and here to like the channel. Do that for me, I'd really appreciate it. Now let's get back to this interesting young man and see what he has to say. I don't realize how much religion played a part in culture. So when someone sneezes, you say, bless you. When you stub your toe or something, you Jesus Christ. What? Like, why, why are we making up these ideas as to what to, to say and do? It didn't even register with me until I came here. And so the same thing but in, in like an Islamic kind of version of that. So when you say something that is, um, that is a lie, like say you make a joke, you know, you say, oh, this man has a big head. Then someone, someone would inevitably say, oh, astaghfirullah. So that's kind of like, forgive him, Lord, for he knows not what he's saying. It's kind of like that kind of thing, right? That's the full lot. So people have these, so there's these differences in culture when it comes to religion. Then you have these other differences when it comes to like um, your local practices, things like um, your marabou. So your marabou is what some people in the West would have called black magic. I hate that term black magic because ain't nothing wrong with being black. Or with black itself. But these people who are determined to make the black cat unlucky and, you know, make um, magic good until it's black magic, and it's crazy. So, Marabou is like, it's quite normal. It's quite a normal thing to be, you know, I'm unhappy with this person, so what I'm going to do is call someone to come and put some um, some potion on her or some incantation and she will be suffering because of it. On top of that, on top of the religion, on top of the, the marabou, <coughs> there's this thing that really gets on my nerves where it's like if you walk into a room you have to greet everybody in that room. And if before they greet you, you have to greet them first. Outside the door here, there's a bunch of brothers who just lounge, chill out, sit on the floor, laugh, drink, kick back. And when I come out the front door, they stop and look at me and wait for me to greet them. I'm not greeting you. What are you doing outside my yard? I'm not greeting you. So there's always this kind of contention. And this happened as well um, at a restaurant because I used to be like, well, look, it's my restaurant, so you greet me. Let's change, let's change the rules, huh? Let's change the rules. Here are the rules are um, you greet the owner first. That's the new rule, okay? When, you, when we're outside of the restaurant, if I see you first, I'll greet you first, no problem. But in the restaurant, 
different rules. Nobody liked me for saying that because I'm going against the culture. So you have these, you have these cultural differences and things that are ex different expectations. Okay, so we're going to move on to number five now. Five. The big one. This is one I don't agree with. Let's get into it. Oh, this is good, isn't it? Yeah, I said number five. I haven't even done number four yet. So number four goes that there is no true love. Having a family seems more of a chore. Here, women have children and then just easily give them away. How parents seem to add too much pressure to children to make sure that they survive. Hmm. Now this one's a, a particularly sad one. Uh, you know, there's a there's a real strong poverty mindset for many people, not all. For I mean, those people I spoke about, they're on subsisting. Very strong so, um, poverty mindset, which I wish could be broken quickly. Because when you're living with a poverty mindset, you don't see the possibility of things getting better. You just see, like, you know, we just got to, like, get out of the mud as much as we can, you know, by any means necessary. And that by any means necessary, necessary means that people are willing to, like, you know, um, cheat and steal and, and lie and whatever, whatever it takes to get ahead just by a little bit. Um, which is sad, very sad. And there's no no indictment on uh, local people. Like, how is it that some you know something here is worth the same money as it's worth back over in the in the West, but people get paid like a tenth of the price of what people get paid here. And it's true about people giving away their children. I mean, it's it's like if you're making no money, if you're broken, you can't afford to feed your children, and then some Angelina Jolie type person turns up and says, "I'll look after your baby. I'm not going to pay for it, but here's five hundred dollars," and I'll take the baby. You'll take those $500, definitely. Why not? Because it's going to cost you $500 to look after the child for the for the year. You know, so... Rather than that, keep the money and lose the baby. Things are hard. The poverty mindset is very strong here. Um, and that will determine how people think or what people think or if people think to the point where you know um, if you're from the west and you don't have that that mindset there it will completely baffle you completely misunderstand okay okay so we're gonna move on to number five now five this person says it's hard to maintain a healthy diet and generally, most locals don't want to know about it. Things are kind of starting to like make sense as you, as I'm thinking about this video being done, I'm seeing that things tie into each other. So the idea of the food being bad over here, the the food being um, unhealthy. People eat a lot of rice here, a lot of rice. Um, yes, it is bad for you. Yes, technically it's bad for you. And what other people eat, those people eat that rice with is a little stew, a little fish, a little chicken. The chicken would be a, an onion, tomato gravy. Maybe they'll do a domodos, so it'd be like a peanut based um, sauce like a satay sauce, they'll do that, um, and there'll be beef or chicken or fish. But the cuts of meat, the cuts of chicken, you know, it's usually awful. It's, it's the stuff that people in the West will usually throw away. And there's very little of it. 
because what will fill you is the rice. And so because people are, de are having such a small budget to work with, they need to make a meal for four people on a budget of two pounds or something. Just crazy. So, yeah, eating, you know, a sliver of chicken with a little bit of uh, sauce and a bunch of rice is not healthy. True. However, I'm from the land of pret a Burger King, McDonald's, Wimpy and pizzas, as I mentioned before. Oh, terribly bad. Like, straight up poisonous for you. Very, very bad. No one bats an eyelid. You know, people in the, people in the UK are so, are so getting overweight and fat. I remember even like when I was um, at a restaurant. We had like a long walkway from the car park to the restaurant. And I could... For, for the most part, I could tell which ones were American and which ones were not, simply by their, their size and how they walk. Because in the States, there are way too many people like overweight, like obese, overweight. And then on top of that, and this, this is no shade, it's not me like beating down on overweight people but on top of that you then get this kind of it comes with this positive talk about how you know this, pos this body positive talk about being overweight as well so people are not only people are not discouraged to be overweight they applauded and I'm like this is not good for your health. This will shorten your lifespan. This isn't, this isn't me saying, ha, 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 look at you, you're overweight. No. This is me concerned because you're putting too much pressure on your heart. You know? And the reason why, just like how over here in Africa, it's not my place to speak down on people who don't make as much money as those people from the West because the reason why they don't make as much money is because of the system within which within, within the system within which they live you can't pass down on people who are overweight in the West because the reason why is because the food system that they live in is poisonous and I wish that there were better ways of dealing with this the only way is if we were to look at each other and learn from one another, work with one another, visit one another, you know. Um, we're always being encouraged to look at the differences between those of us who are from the West and those of us who are from the continent. We're being encouraged to believe that we have nothing in common. In actual fact, when you really check it, we have a lot more in common than we have that separates us so let's look at it. let's look at that all right people so that's your five items what can i say you take care of yourself until next time peace